Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI assessment, admission assessment exam review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving some problems having to do with conversions of decimals to fractions. Decimals to fractions, there are three notions you will encounter in the exams that are interrelated, decimals, fractions and percentages and you have to be able to go back and forth from one to the other. We'll do sample problems that you see there on page number 26 today. Sample problems. Number one. The very first one is asking us to convert 0 0.08, 0 0.08 into fractions. Now listen, before before I completely forget it, there are there are ten problems that are that are here that you see there. If you feel that you need more practice after having done these ten pro, ten, ten sample problems, there are some videos. There are some more videos that you can avail yourself to. Just type in basic math in the series of basic math, day 51 through 65. Day 51 through 65. There are 15 videos there dealing with the notion of convergence from decimals to percentages to fractions and back and forth. Help yourself. Point zero 0.08, we need to, point, in, in point zero 0.08, we need to move the decimal spots two places. So we need to take our point zero 0.08. In order for us to be able to move it two spots, we need to multiply it by 100. If you're going to multiply the top by 100, we must multiply the bottom by 100. And remember, if there is nothing on the bottom, that means there is one there. Now, 0 0.08 times 100 is just 8. And the bottom we get 100, 100 times 1, which is 100. We can't leave it like this. We have to reduce it. We need to reduce it. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. And see what happens. How many 4s does 8 have? 8 has... Let's, 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 let's divide by 2 first. The eight, 8 has 4 2s. And 10 has 5 2s. And that's 0. 100 divided by... 100 divided by 2 is 50. Let's divide one more time by 2. That becomes 2 and that becomes 25. And that we don't, we don't have to think too much. 2 over 25 is the answer. 2 over 25 is the answer. Which makes, which makes perfect sense. If you think about it, which makes perfect sense. Because if you were to multiply 2 over 25, if you were to multiply it by top and bottom by 4, if you multiply top and bottom by 4, you'll end up with 2 times 4, which is 8, and 25 times 4, which is 100, you'll end up with... 8 over 100 and 8 over 100 is clearly 0 0.08. Number 2. Number 2. Point zero two five. Point zero two five. This is number 2. Multiply top and bottom by 1000. Not a hundred, but a thousand, because we need to move the decimal spots three places. One, two, three. We need to bring it here. So if you multiply 0 0.025 by a thousand, it becomes 25. It becomes 25. So on the top, we end up with 25. And on the bottom, we'll end up with one times a thousand, which is a thousand. One times a thousand is a thousand, but we're not going to write thousand as a thousand. Let's write thousand as 100 times 10. And you will see in a second why because now it's easier for us to deal with 100. How many 25, how many 25 does 100 have? 100 is, 100 is made up of 4 25. 4 quarters make a dollar. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. 25 divided by 25 is 1. 100 divided by 25 is 4. And we end up with 1 on the top. And on the bottom we end up with 4 times the 10 which is 40. The answer is 1 over 40. This marker is pretty this marker is pretty morbid. I'm going to retire it. Let's hope that this one that I'm picking up is uh, any good. Yesterday we learned the we yesterday in the lecture we used the word abeyance and I never actually explained what it means. We learned the word abeyance. Abbreviate day number nine. In our, in our vocabulary lessons, 
in our vocabulary lessons we learned about appearance on day number nine which simply means to leave something aside put uh, put put something aside we'll deal with it later let's postpone it let's put it in the state of inactivity for a while Morbon. did we ever use did we ever cover the word morbon in the vocabulary lessons let's find out we'll look it up under m and see if it appears there can be there can be too many words just beginning with m oh we did day number 71 vocabulary lessons day 71 it says here from 1 to 100 but I'm not quite done with all the 100 videos I think I'm at day number 75 right now on day number 71 we learned about more open let's keep on going number two number three So what does moribund mean? Again, I forgot almost. Moribund means almost dead, dying, almost at the verge of dying. That marker that I just threw away was moribund. Number three says point point one two five point one two five. We need to convert this into fractions. Let's see what we can do. Again, we need to move it three places. We need to move it three places. One, two, three. We need to move it three spots. So we need to multiply it by one with the three zero. One, two, three. Point two five times ten will give us one point two five. Point one two five times hundred will give us twelve point five. And point one two five times a thousand will make this a nice whole number of one hundred and twenty five. Since we are multiplying top by a thousand, we must multiply the bottom by a thousand. On the bottom we have 1. And now we can move our decimal spot. As we point it out here. Decimal is right here. Move it. 1, 2, 3. It ends up here. And it becomes 125. So we end up with 125 on the top. On the bottom we end up with 1, one times 100. Or 1 times 1000 which is 1000. We're going to write our 1000 as 100 times 10. 100 times 10 because it's easier to deal with 100 instead of dealing with the entire 1000. How many 25 does, does, how many 25 does 125 have? 125 has 525. Think of, think of 125 as $1.25. If you have $1.25, how many quarters do you have? Well, five quarters make $1.25. Four quarters make a dollar. And five quarters will give you $1.25. 125. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. 125 has 525 and 100 has 425. Oh, there's a 5 and there's a 10. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. So 5 is going to become 1 and 10 is going to become 2 and there we go. It becomes 1 8. It becomes 1 8. Let's keep on going. That was number 3. Number 4. Number 4. Number 4 is asking us to convert 0.17 0.17 into fraction. Point 0.17 has only two places, 1 and 2. Multiply top and bottom by 100. Multiply top by 100. Multiply bottom by 100. Remember, at the bottom we have 1. So we end up with, we end up with 7, 0.17 times 100 is going to give us 17. We end up with 17 and 1 times 100 is 100. And since and since 17 happens to be a prime number, since 17 happens to be a prime number, we can't do anything with it. We can't reduce it anymore. That's it. That's your answer. 17 over 100. How do we know that 17 is a prime number? Well, you just have to know it. You just have to, re you just have to be able to recognize your prime numbers. It, if, not, if not 1 through 100, at least 1 through 50. You must know your prime numbers 1 through 50. You, you have to be able to recognize them. And they're all there. Go, to, go in this series in basic math and look for video with the title of prime numbers. There are two of the there are two two of them. One video will teach you the prime numbers from one through fifty, another one from fifty one through one hundred. They are all there. You just have to look for them. Basic math. Number five. Number five is asking us to convert point three. Oh that's it, that's too silly. Point three into fractions. Let's multiply top and bottom by ten. So this is point three over one. 0.3 times 10 is 3 and 1 times 10 is 10. Again, since 3 is a prime number, they, it will have no common factor with anything else. So all that's what prime number means. Prime number means 
prime number means you cannot divide that number by anything except by itself and 1. So obviously 3 tenths will remain 3 tenths. Let's do number 6. Number 6 is asking us to convert 2.75 into fraction. Well, 0.75 we know, 0.75 we know is 3 quarter. Of course, it's too simple. 0.25 is a quarter. A quarter, a quarter is 25%. A quarter of something is a 25% or 0.25. If a quarter is 0.25, two quarters would have to be 50, 0.5, 50%, and three quarters would have to be 75% or 0.75. Of course, we know that. And therefore, 2.75 is nothing but two and three quarters. That's it, you can leave it like that. Do, can we leave it like this or do they want it in fractions? I don't know, whatever the book says in the back. Does the book give you, is it okay to leave it in mixed fraction, in the form of a mixed fraction? Or are they hell bent that you give them fractions even if it happens to be improper fractions? I don't know, let's find out. I'm looking at the answers in the back. Subtraction of fraction, division of fraction, changing fractions to decimals. Changing decimals to fractions and we are on number, that was number six. Yes, two and three quarter. Two and three quarter. Number seven, eight, nine and ten we'll do tomorrow. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.